Today we come to our final station of the resurrection with Pentecost. The church launched afresh into the world. And it might be something that we need to reflect and discuss upon as we prepare for the church post COVID-19. As we begin to meet again, to reflect, are we doing the things we need to? Are there things we should do differently? Are there things we should stop doing? We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us into new ways, more effective ways of being church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people, and will have compassion on his suffering ones. Jesus said, This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. So let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him shall never die. Alleluia. And a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost to come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Now, some people call Pentecost, with Sunday in old money, the birthday of the church. That might be putting it a bit strongly. Perhaps the church was formed when Jesus called his first disciple. But certainly, Pentecost was the launching of the church on an unexpecting world, and by means of a group of unexpecting men and women. Other than the fact that they were waiting in Jerusalem for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which had been promised by Jesus only a few days before, they probably had no idea what was going to happen. And when the Spirit came, it was unmistakable, a noise like a rushing wind, tongues of fire, and the crowd from all over the Roman Empire able to understand what the disciples were telling them. It's worth carrying on reading Acts, Peter's amazing sermon, but also the controversy and mistakes of the early church. We always have been fallible, but somehow God uses the church anyway. Pentecost is about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God in the way in which the Father is God and the Son is God. They are all part of the indivisible nature of God, which we describe as Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God with us and alongside us, as paraclete, comforter and counsellor. The Holy Spirit might be as quiet as the echo of a voice, or as loud as the rushing of a mighty wind. The Spirit is active through the church and outside the church, as Acts 2 reminds us. The Ascension was not the end of the story of Jesus, but the end of the first chapter. The first disciples waited faithfully for the coming of the Spirit, to begin the second chapter of the story of Jesus. As church today, we need to be open to the Spirit. 
in our attention to prayer, the scriptures and meeting together so that we remain faithful to the teachings of Jesus. We also need to be open to the Spirit in the mission that God calls us to, because the Spirit is with us on our front lines, where we spend most of our days with family, friends and work colleagues. What is the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your response to God's call to join in his mission?